What's happening, everybody? I'm Steve, and welcome back to Junk Drummer TV, where I give my initial reactions, my hot takes, and my analysis on the drummers of today and yesterday, maybe tomorrow if I stick around that long. I'm a professional drum teacher and a gigging musician, and I have been for the last 20 plus years. So, all comments, suggestion, August rolls on, and today is the first episode that was sponsored by a viewer. This episode goes out to Josh Myers. Also, by the way, there is a tier on my Patreon that allows you to sponsor a video if you're interested. Go check that out. And Mr. Myers has been on me for probably months now to do Adam Willard when he was with Angels and Airwaves. Adam Willard has low-key carved out a wonderful career for himself. He's kind of like the Josh Freeze that no one talks about because he's been in all kinds of great bands. He was in The Offspring. He was in Social Distortion, who's like one of my favorite bands. He was a founding member of Angels and Airwaves, and right now he's with Against Me. That means this guy's got some skills that makes him marketable to lots of different kinds of artists, and we're probably going to check that out today. Also, this is going to be the first video that we do where it seems like he's in the process of recording the song. This is the studio uh, version of The War. Uh, everyone who's asked me to do The Rev, doing Almost Easy in the video, or almost easy in the studio. Stick around because that's coming. So before we get into it, everyone, uh, please check out my Patreon. Please check out my merch table. I also have a PayPal option link in the description. And let's check out Adam Willard in the studio. What? Fucking sounds rad, no matter what. Okay. This video is pretty lousy. And this is like a 10 year old video. Man, that is a bad ass snare drum sound. You can hear how good the, the, the room is that he's in the studio. That drum room is live. Big, wide open right down the middle groove. Okay, let's talk about that right there. If you notice during the verse, uh, the, the main groove is like a one, two, three, a four. One, two, three, a four. There was a verse, and then that seemed to be like a pre-chorus breakdown, and in the chorus, notice that he's keeping that a four drum fill in there. That is now a theme for which he can play with. I say this all the time to my students. Why are you playing something? What's the purpose behind it? The purpose behind this is to give right off the bat, just I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to hear that a four, that ba -ba a lot in this. That gives a theme and it gives your drum composition uh, concrete. It, it cements it. It makes sense all the way through. He even started that drum fill with the up orienta. <laughs> this is a guy who is not scared. There was that doom, that a four. There it is again. You're going to see that a lot. That is great studio drumming we go yeah notice right there second verse he's adding some stuff he didn't do that the first time that uh bah, gah, 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 or whatever it was i think i just played uh you two but that's kind of what that felt like little larry mullen thing second verse adding a little bit a studio recording for the most part should kind of always go like this should always be adding tasteful things as it goes on. And those are the things that I think subconsciously, as listeners, we like. Uh, even if you're not a musician and you're not thinking on those terms. What I was going to say, this is a guy who's recorded hundreds and hundreds of hours in the studio. He is not scared of the red light syndrome. We'll talk about the red light syndrome here in a minute. That'll be, I guess, a little bit of a hot take today. 
Man, listen to that bass drum. That is a phenomenal drum room. It's so, it makes playing your drums so easy when you're in a big live, and it's not big, but a live drum room sound, you're inspired by the sounds and you play so much better. You, you play so much better when your shit sounds good. Get that snare drum sound. I want that snare drum sound. There it is. It gives the composition glue with a, a theme. When you, when you record your parts, everything that you play should have purpose. Not just fucking putting it in there because you can. Let's go ahead and talk about the, the red light syndrome. If you've been able to record, and those first couple recording sessions, especially when you're paying for them, it can be daunting and it can be nerve-wracking. The red light syndrome, we've all heard about it. I've always thought about recording like this, from recording to live. When you're, when you're practicing or rehearsing with your band or you're playing live, it's like driving your car. Everything's comfortable. Everything just feels fine. There's no worry in your mind. <clears throat> You're just playing. Then you get to the studio and everything that you play has so much more weight to it because when you're playing live or you're practicing you play notes and they go out into the ether and they may not be consistent they may be a little out of time they may be wrong but it doesn't matter because you don't ever have to listen to that shit again when you go to the studio you have to listen to it for the rest of your life once you lay down that track that is the thing you have to listen to forever and uh it <laughs> All of your notes become so thoughtful. You think about everything that you're doing because you know what you're doing is being preserved forever or as long as the hard drive exists. And when you're playing in the studio, it's like you're driving in your car and there's a cop behind you. And every small little mistake can seem like it's been... Uh, amplified because it has because it's being recorded so playing live is like driving your car playing in the studio is like having two cop cars behind you you're waiting for the worst to happen this guy right here is a pro this is a producer that I used to make records with he'd always joke about you know we're going to bring in a thousand dollar a day drummer and you know that's that producer speak for bringing in Josh Freeze this guy's a thousand dollar a day drummer. If you notice, he's making sure that every uh, stroke is consistent. The, the, the least amount of work that you can give that engineer uh, is appreciated. And that's how you keep getting gigs when a producer and engineer deals with a studio cat. I've been pretty lucky. I've made like 16 records. I've spent couple hundred hours in the studio i'm pretty comfortable but man those first couple were who boy i was so i lost my hair because i was worried about every little thing and the, it's just like anything else the more you do it the more second nature it becomes but if you could be really consistent with your time and consistent with your takes and consistent with and sometimes people don't even think about this until they get into the studio consistent sound production every time he hits that snare drum it's the exact same sound that's the stuff that engineers and producers are looking for and that's how you keep getting called i wonder if this is the the take from the song there's that a four again you're gonna hear it a bunch i'm going to make a prediction that somewhere along the line towards the end of the song He's going to use that big uh, four to set up something that's kind of unleashing the hounds. Like a double chorus. Yeah, man, those first couple sessions you do, especially when you're paying for it, and you're trying to get stuff done in a, in a quick manner, man. It can, it can fuck with your head. Nope. There we go. We've talked about this on the channel. When you want something to sound heavier, play less on your rod source. And it goes to a good old-fashioned quarter note bash groove right there.
Yeah, man. The, the engineers in the in the room right now are going, I'm not going to have to compress a lot of the snare drum because the snare drum is so consistent all the way through. Those are things you don't think about it. Yeah, that's so like the uh, beginning of that U2 song. Sunday, Blake, Sunday. <laughs> yeah, man, that is... Oh, yeah, look at that. I think, yeah, this is... We're watching real recording right there. That is a face of a man who is like, Yes! I got through the track with no mistakes and put all of the shit that I wanted in there. That is one of the best feelings in the world when you can get a track nailed pretty quickly. We're going to assume that this is pretty quickly. Adam Willard. I, I know I am a, a lonely man in the forest yelling my little catchphrase, make drums musical again. And I am here fending off YouTube shred culture because I am interested in song playing and and song composition and and what I like I talked about earlier when I talked to my students why did you do that what's the purpose of it does it serve the song or does it serve your ego because you think it's cool and 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 awesome and you want to sh uh, let your girlfriend listen to it that is drumming that will get you the gig. And it has. Adam Willers played with everybody. Rocket from the Crypt. That's the other band. I think that's the band he broke with. This guy has been able to keep employed because he knows what it's what's the most important thing. And that is playing drums for the song. If you do that, you will get paid and you will get laid. It's going to be another catchphrase, I think. I loved everything that we heard today. Tom DeLonge is a is a master of uh, just like catchy pop punky stuff. Like he's just a master of it. Uh, even with that nasally voice, he's so good at like the sing songy thing. Adam Willard is doing. If 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 you're watching all of the YouTube shred stuff, and man, again, I'm not trashing that stuff. That stuff's really fun. Drum athleticism is really fun to watch. But if you're really interested in making music with musicians and making records, be more like Adam Willard and less about and less like the guy who wants to show you every 30 second note lick that he has in three measures. That's good, solid drumming. And his drum sound was phenomenal. Oh my God, that snare drum sound and bass drum sound especially. That is what you're hearing is, uh, you know, drums more than any other instrument is affected by the room that they're in. Uh, I always tell this story to students. I'll be on tour and my drums will sound wonderful one night and sound like shit the next just because it's in a different room. You can hear the room sound so well in this. And this is a really old video. And like, you know, high def, this is a high def recording that we were just watching. So be more like Adam Willard and keep practicing until it's easy.